Esteemed attendees, I know what you're thinking. That's not the angelic voice of Mike Williams reaching my computer speakers. No, it's not. My name is Henry Ski. I am the account executive here at Ring Partner in beautiful Victoria, British Columbia. We thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I, I do apologize for our East Coast listeners who are still buried under mountains of snow. I can assure you that out here uh, I'll be enjoying the weather for you because it is gorgeous and sunny. We might get a cloud later on, but uh, don't worry, I'll, I'll pull through. One of the things I was I was thinking about as I as I sit here in in uh, Ring Partners offices looking over the uh, the gorgeous view of uh, of currently a half full parking lot is how reliant we are on mobile search. Nearly every campaign we have allows it. Uh, it drives a huge amount of calls. Uh, Google is going to have its own government one day. It's an extraordinarily powerful tool to drive calls. But you know what I thought? I don't know enough. So I called up my friend McKay Allen from Log My Calls, and I said, McKay, I need to know more. How do I make more money with mobile AdWords? It has changed the paid search marketing game forever. Most marketers now prefer to generate phone calls instead of generating clicks or form fills. You understand this, but, but how can we get other people to understand the importance of phone calls, and what does the future hold for paid search marketing? I'd like to introduce now the organizer and presenter of this wonderful webinar, McKay Allen. McKay, thanks very much for joining us today. Henry, thanks, man. We appreciate it. Thanks for Ring Partner for putting this together. And, and uh, we've done a few webinars with uh, Mike at Williams at Ring Partner, now with Henry. And so we're, we're grateful for them. Great company. We see them at events and all sorts of stuff. So great company to work for. So thank you, Henry. Excellent. Um, well, I'm glad our, uh, our red shoes and our red hoodies usually make us quite visible and I'm quite loud. So you'll either hear us or see us at all the uh, major conferences. Absolutely. That's the way to do it, though. You've got to stand out. Absolutely. Um, so it looks like you can see the first uh, deck of my, or slide of my deck here. I want to first, before we get into the presentation, um, we have a, a pretty big announcement today here at Log My Calls. I'm going to share my screen with you um, so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so we actually uh, today are announcing that we have acquired the media and publishing division of CallSource. Uh, for those of you familiar with the call analytics space, CallSource has been kind of the granddaddy of them all, right? CallSource was the company that really invented call analytics back in the mid-90s. And they're a very large company. We've acquired a very large division of that company, uh, the media and publishing division. And so uh, a lot of large publishers, a lot of large agencies, and a lot of large call outlets um, are now using um, uh, the Log My Calls platform and uh, are now clients of ours. And so that's a, that's a big deal. We're excited to announce that. Today is the actual day the press release was published and sent out into the world. And I, I realized I was presenting on this webinar on the same day, and so I thought, oh, I'll announce this here. So um, we're excited for this. And uh, thank you to CallSource for, for working with us on this. And thank you to um, all the other, other folks who made it possible. So this is an exciting time for our company. There'll be some additional really, really exciting announcements in the next two or three months. So, uh, yeah, this is a big deal, and it should really change the face of call analytics. So if you have any questions on that, just feel free to type those into the question bar. Um, before we get started, I want to make two quick announcements. Number one, Henry said this webinar today is going to be recorded. So um, don't worry about taking notes necessarily. Just pay attention. We're going to engage in some discussion. And then uh, um, at the conclusion, we want you to ask questions, and that's really the second announcement. So in the question bar on your screen, just to make sure you know exactly where it is, can you please, please type in where you're calling from today? So where are you today? Um, and tell us, uh, tell, your, tell us where you're calling in from today. So Henry's in Victoria, BC. I'm in Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, it's been a mild winter out here, um, though we do still have winter. Uh, but it, it has been mild. So we've got, looks like people from all over the place. We've got San Francisco, we've got the Netherlands, we've got Vancouver, we've got Argentina, we've got South Carolina, we've got New York City, we've got New Hampshire, dot, 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 represent, says William. W William, <laughs> where are you in New Hampshire? I lived in New Hampshire for two years. I'm curious where you are. William? We have Shanghai, China, too, by the way. That's fantastic. Oh, he's by Keen. All right. Keen is a blessed place. Very good. <laughs> Okay, so let's get started here. I'll hop into my PowerPoint deck. Um, and uh, we'll get started here. 
So I'm going to uh, let's start from the beginning, which is a good place to start. So the title of today's presentation, by the way, is Five Ways to Get More Revenue from AdWords. We're going to talk a lot about mobile. We're going to talk about some general AdWords principles. We're going to talk about bid management. We're going to talk about analytics. So it's going to be an exciting, fun-filled uh, 35, 40 minutes of presentation. Then I want your uh, questions. That's going to be important uh, for this to be successful. So uh, again, my name is McKay Allen. I'm the director of content at Log My Calls. Um, I've spoken at various events, um, content marketing conference, LeedsCon, SMX, all over the place. In a previous life, I was a former TV news anchor and reporter. Um, I've written articles for Forbes, Search Engine Journal, PPC Hero, and elsewhere. Um, so let's jump right in. So today's agenda, first thing we're going to do is talk about quality score. That's important in mobile as well as in desktop and AdWords. We're going to talk about landing page testing and some mobile AdWords principles for landing pages. We're going to talk about how to generate phone calls, lead scoring for phone calls, and then finally automation and bid management. And uh, again, I want to go back to thanks for indulging me with that bit of news. We just thought it was kind of a big deal. With people who care about phone calls on this webinar, that we've acquired the media and publishing division, a large division of call source is a big deal. And so we wanted to share that with you first. So part one, quality score. Now, the, the segment of this webinar on quality score, I stole from a good friend of mine, Fred the Valets. He was one of the first 200 employees at Google. And he was one of the guys that actually built the AdWords platform. And so he knows this stuff about AdWords and quality score more than probably any person alive. And so I stole these slides from him. Um, <laughs> Totally stealing. Um, I did a webinar with him actually with the American Marketing Association, and uh, and he presented these slides. And so I reached out and said, "Hey, I'm going to use these in a future webinar too. Is that okay?" So um, quality score is an approximation of how Google expects the keyword to perform, and then there are actual scores that are unique for each query. So quality score is a one of the ways that Google determines how much you are going to pay for a bid. It's one of the ways that Google will determine where your ad is placed, how many people see it, and when they see it. It's a big deal, in other words. So what are the elements of quality score? Well, there's click-through rate, there's relevancy, and there's landing page. And we'll talk more about the landing page when we get to the section, but I want to focus right now on click-through rate. Click-through rate is by far the most important factor contributing to your quality score. If you have an ad that no one is clicking on, in a desktop or a mobile environment, your quality score is going to go down. And your ad will not be placed in a, in a position to get it more clicks because your click-through rate is bad. So how do you improve click-through rate? That's, that's sort of the big question. Well, in the desktop environment, it's, it's relatively simple, right? You, you, you say something clever in the ad that is direct. You drive them to a landing page that offers the same thing. They have to be congruent. They have to match. In a mobile environment, it's a little bit different because you now put phone numbers, call extensions, in the ad itself. Those count as a click-through and count towards your click-through rate. So if you want someone to call the phone number you put in your ad, you need to have call-friendly language, right? Call now for a free quote. Call now for this. Call now for that. If you want them to simply click through to a mobile landing page, you need to say that in the text itself. Click-through rate is directly related to the quality of the writing in the ad itself. So if you don't know how to write a good AdWords ad, you need to get somebody who does, because that will directly impact how much you're going to pay for every click-through that you get. Part two, landing page testing. This is vitally important. This is, this is really the crux of everything AdWords, landing page testing. So the first thing I want to stress is to put, and I'm going to go through each of these segments each of these four things on your screen uh, in detail. So first of all, with regular landing pages. So regular AdWords campaigns um, that, that appear on desktops and laptops. The first thing you want to do is make sure you have a phone number on the page. Now some people might say, oh my goodness, this is, uh, this is blasphemy. We want only form fills for our landing pages. Bah, humbug, or something. So, that's true. It, it's different than what most people were taught, what most marketers were taught, but we understand how important phone calls are, right? We're in the call business. We get how important phone calls are. And so what we challenge businesses to do is in addition to the form on your page, make sure that you also put a phone number. Because if you're not putting a phone number, if you're not putting a phone number, 
muted. You are in a position where you're not going to get every lead that you could potentially get. Why do I say that? I say that because our research shows very clearly that callers are better leads than form fills. And so while a call, a phone number on a landing page might distract them from not filling out the form, it's a good distraction. It's a good distraction. It's like being at a dance and seeing a pretty girl and then a prettier one walks in. You want the prettier one. So it's a good distraction. You want the phone number on that landing page. On the mobile landing page, the rule is, is totally different. There's basically three rules with mobile landing pages. And I've written on this at, at Mobile Marketer and on Mobile Marketing Watch and spoken on it at the conference or two. Mobile landing pages, here's the keys. Number one, make sure you have a phone number on that page that is tappable, that it is clickable. Boom. Number one. And if that's all there is on that landing page with some words that say call us now or call today or something, that's great. The second thing you want to do is make sure it's responsive, obviously. You can go to any mobile landing page company in the world and it will automatically be responsive. I should probably even stop saying that one because it's standard at this point. And then third and finally, if you insist upon having a form, or if your clients insist upon having a form, or if your publishers insist upon having a form, I suppose it's okay. But just keep in mind, if someone is searching for a business on a mobile phone, on a smartphone, they want to call you. So try to talk to whoever you can talk out of filling out a form on a mobile landing page. If you must have a form, make it two or three fields max. Have them put in a phone number, have them put in an email address, and that's it. People simply don't want to type a ton of information into a form on a mobile phone. It just doesn't work real well. But the thing I would really encourage you to do is use call extensions. Um, I'm sure most of you are familiar with what call extension is. Basically, it allows you to use any phone number within the Google ad itself. So actually, a phone number appears in the AdWords ad on the smartphone that allows you to tap that number and make a call immediately. So you never actually go to a landing page. So in my opinion, the future of mobile landing pages is a world without mobile landing pages. Because I believe people are going to skew so hard towards the phone, they're going to want that interaction as quickly as possible. Adding a mobile landing page simply adds a step. So my challenge to you is to add the phone number to the ad itself and just forget mobile landing pages altogether. If you must have them, make sure they have a phone number. And if you must have a form, make sure it's short. All right, let's talk about generating phone calls because this is what we're really passionate about. Let me just back up and talk about the effectiveness and the importance of phone calls. I'm going to use some proprietary data throughout the rest of this presentation um, that I hope is helpful to you. So businesses spent $73 billion to generate phone calls in 2013. That's a big deal, a very, very big deal. 90% of customer conversations, two-way communication still take place on the phone. Of course, email, you know, people will email, they'll fill out forms, but direct two-way immediate conversations, 90% of them still happen on the phone. Unmuted. 30 billion calls we made to businesses this year as a direct result of mobile search. And that's actually a 2014 statistic. I think that number is going to be higher in 2015. 64% of local businesses say calls are the best leads they receive. Let that wash over you for a moment. Now, we're all familiar with call tracking. This is a screenshot of our dashboard at Log My Calls. Um, and, and, you know, we, we get the basic gist of call tracking. You want to get credit for the conversions you produce. You want to associate a phone number with every ad, with every ad group, with every keyword, with every keyword group. You want to associate phone numbers with everything so you get credit for everything. Now we can provide you, of course, with the local and toll-free phone numbers. And you get reports and you get data that show you which of those are generating phone calls. And that's fine. So, of course, the key, as I just said, is knowing which channels are generating those calls. The organic search generate calls. How many calls are coming from mobile? How many calls are coming from paid search or other forms of direct advertising? Mobile searchers, and this is, this is critical to understand. Mobile searchers want to call you. They want to call you. That is what they want to do. Why is that? Because mobile searchers are farther down the funnel. If someone is searching for something on their smartphone, a business-related search, they've already researched it. They're not starting the research process while they're sitting at a red light on their smartphone. That's not what they're doing. What they're doing is they're trying to make a decision. So they research something at work or at home, and now they want to get something done. They want to buy something. So 70% of mobile local searches result in phone calls. That is a staggering number. Now what this means is that, and, and you add this up to, to the prevalence of mobile search, right? The, 
the increasing um, proliferation of mobile search. Google says that mobile search has now surpassed desktop search. So that means that, that uh, searchers are more likely to interact with your company on their smartphone than on their laptop or their desktop. They're going to interact with your company on their smartphone more than any other source. That's a staggering change. And they want to call you. They want to call you. So um, which sort of the industries are the most uh, useful candidates for a phone call and a smartphone search? Well, local services, of course, automotive, tech, travel, finance, restaurants and retail are down the list. Now, we're in tech. Now, here's the interesting thing is in our industry, it's not really a call-heavy industry, right? Most people, 97% of our leads fill out a form on our site. They request a demo or they download a white paper or they come to a webinar like, that's how we get our leads. Now, here's the interesting thing. In the last audit we did over the last quarter, we found that 97% of our leads were generated from form fills and 3% from phone calls. But here's the fascinating part. 17% of our revenue came from those 3% phone calls. So calls are more likely to purchase, and they are more likely to purchase large items. They're going to generate more revenue for you. Now, this is a piece of data here that I want to spend some time explaining and discussing, because it's, it's, this is the vital element of understanding all this. So, Research from Marketing Sherpa and HubSpot and every marketing source we can find indicates that anywhere from 2 to 3% of your leads that fill out a form will end up buying from you within the next six months. So 2 to 3%. That's a really small number. Well, data that we have gathered indicates that 29 to 30% of callers will buy from you within the next six months. So literally, Callers are 10 times more likely to turn into customers than anyone who fills out a form. That's staggering, stunning data. So if anyone, if you have a client ever tell you that they don't like phone calls, they're dumb because phone calls are going to turn into revenue more frequently and they're going to turn into revenue more um, higher levels of revenue than anyone who fills out a form will. Bottom line is this. Customers still want to talk to you because calls matter. They matter a lot. So let's just review this before we move on to lead scoring. Number one, Google says that mobile search has surpassed desktop search, which means people are going to be uh, interacting with you on their smartphone more frequently and regularly than they are on their laptops or desktop. That's number one. Number two, the most common action after a mobile business search is a phone call. And number three, call, calls are ten times more likely turn into revenue than form fills are. This changes the way you do AdWords. It should change the way your clients do AdWords, if you're an agency or a publisher. It changes the way you think about AdWords. You want to generate phone calls. That is priority number one, because they generate more revenue than form fills. All right, let's talk about lead scoring for phone calls. <laughs> and I'm always hesitant to get into something that our own tool can do, a log my call, but I thought this was important. And it's actually really cool proprietary data, so I wanted to get into it. So one of the things that has been discouraging, I think, for people in the call world, especially in the paper call world, is that there really hasn't been a ton of data available about phone calls. So for example, um, for example, if, if you wanted to gauge the quality of a phone call, you were forced into this very narrow box of duration. You were forced to say, well, a call was over 60 seconds, so it must be valuable. Or a call was over 90 seconds, so it must be valuable. You're into this 30, 60, 90 second paradigm of, of the longer the call, the more valuable it is. Or some mysterious threshold of we're going to start billing people for calls when they're over 60 seconds. And that's fine. It's worked OK. But what we're what we're saying is that there's far more accurate ways and far more data-heavy and data-rich ways to measure the value of a phone call than simply duration. That's one factor, but it's not the only factor, and it's not even the most important factor. Our message is simply that there is gold buried in every phone conversation, every single one. What do I mean by that? Well, we launched a tool called Conversation Analytics. 
about a year ago now. And here's what it does. Basically, it analyzes phone calls with a speech recognition engine that we've built upon which we've, we've layered hundreds of thousands of algorithms. And these algorithms literally rip through the call and rip it apart and look for words and phrases in the call conversation itself that will indicate what happened on the phone call. So we're able to get the gist of the phone call, if you will. So here's the best way I, 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 like, to, I like to use the analogy of to, to explain it, and then I'll give you some examples of how this works. If my wife calls me right now and says, hey, I need you to grab some milk on your way home, that's great. I'll grab some milk. But am I going to be able to tell her how long the call was? Am I going to be able to tell her exactly how many times she used the word milk? No, I'm not. I'm not going to be able to know exactly every word she said, but I am going to know that she wanted me to get milk. I know the gist of the call, and that's the way our system works, is we're able to tell you, for example, for every single phone call, we're able to give you a lead score between 0 and 100. Uh, so if a call has a lead score of 80, it's a really good lead, a great lead, that is very likely to turn into revenue. If a call has a lead score of 21, it's not likely to turn into revenue. Now here's the interesting thing, is we talk to publishers in the space, and, and, and really the people who hold the money, the advertisers of the world, they're telling us that of the calls they're buying, only 10 to 20% of them are worth a darn. And yet they're paying for 50 to 60% of them because they're over 60 or 90 seconds. Our, our tool fixes that problem because it gives you a lead score for every single phone call. Now here's the stunning thing. Um, lead scores over 80 in our system have a close rate, have a revenue rate, if you will, of 91%. So if a lead score is between 80 and 100, that call is going to produce revenue over 90% of the time across all of our industries. It's going to vary based on your industry, of course. So that's just one of the things is lead score. Another thing we can track is whether or not the call resulted in an appointment for a follow-up call or revenue or a reservation or if something was actually purchased on the phone. We can even tell you how well the person on the phone, the employee, handled the call, whether or not they asked specifically for the business whether or not there was a missed opportunity for an upsell. All of these things we track automatically in near real time with our conversation analytics engine. So no more are you left to determine um, the duration of the call as the only me measure of quality. That's an outdated way to do it. So here's another graphical example of how it's done. Um, Jack makes a phone call. He's asking about auto insurance. The call, the words go into our conversation analyzer machine, and out the back end come data. Was there a missed opportunity? What was the phone etiquette like? What's the lead score? All sorts of things. So here's some proprietary data you won't see anywhere else that we have gathered through our system. So what we did is we analyzed millions of phone calls that Conversation Analytics uh, ran through its system. <laughs> and, excuse me. and what we found is that in 29% of the calls we analyzed, there was a conversion, meaning there was a uh, one of the following four actions. An appointment was set, a reservation was made, there was an intended purchase, meaning someone requested a contract or something, or there was an actual purchase. Now imagine being able to know that for every one of the calls you received. Was there a conversion? Did one of those four things happen on the call? That's a big deal. If you were to know, to know that at a glance, or if you were to automate an action based on that data, that's where stuff starts to get really powerful really, really powerful. So imagine being able to judge an AdWords campaign, not based on the number of calls it produced, which we can tell you, and not even if it produced calls over, over 60 seconds, but you're not judging an AdWords campaign based on the number of calls that converted to revenue. That's powerful data that changes your business. I mentioned lead score a moment ago. We, uh, we determine that we, we define, excuse me, a great lead as anything between 80 and 100, and a good lead as anything between 60 and 79. So of all the calls that came through our system, we found that 21% of them were great leads, 28% of them were good leads. Now, the, the only pushback we really had on this metric is from people who say, well, I don't want my clients to know this, <laughs> right? Because if you're selling clients, if you're selling companies calls based on duration, maybe you don't want them to know that their leads are not great and good, right? But that's, that's kind of a scared way to view data. 
Um, if we have the data, we should use it to improve our business as well as our clients' business. So this is a totally new way to judge your AdWords campaigns, to judge your affiliates, to judge your paper call providers, to judge everybody, is lead score data and conversion data. How good was the call? Not did it happen and not how long was it, but how good was it? Because I can tell you something. When I was a single guy, I had a lot of good conversations with, with uh, women that were long. That doesn't mean they were great conversations. It means they were long conversations. And there's a very big difference. All right, let's talk about part five, and then I want to get into questions, because I can see we have a few. Um, now, I've said that, that uh, be it this data is a way to judge your AdWords campaign and get more revenue. I want to say two things that data tells us. Number one, we have clients that when they switch to this method and they start using their ad, they start using lead score, for example, to judge AdWords campaigns, suddenly their AdWords revenue jumps by 20 to 30 percent with the same spin. And the second thing that we've seen in the paper call world is when people start stop judging call value and call worth based on duration and start judging it based on lead quality. Everyone makes more money. Because if you're a lead uh, buyer, you're willing to pay much more for a call that is a lead score of 80 than you are a call that's a lead score of 20. So you're going to weed out your bad affiliates and your bad networks very quickly. Um, very quickly. And so everyone makes money. And that's what we're about, is everybody making more money. So let's talk about automation and bid management. Um, if, you're, if you're doing any level of AdWords, probably over 10 to 15,000 a month, you're probably using a tool like Equizio or Marin or DoubleClick. These are competi competitors in the bid management space. Now, we just completed an, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> an integration with Equizio. And what this integration does is it allows Log My Calls data to show up in the Equizio dashboard. So you can see here, um, it has the vendor, Log My Calls, the date, the time, whether the call is answered, has the duration, so you can use that if you want, though I don't think you should. It has your caller number, your call tracking number, and your destination number. That's really cool. But I'll show you what's cool. What they've done inside the Equizio platform is allow you to set thresholds at which you can automate bids. So for example, if you got five calls, over five calls, and there was one that was dissatisfied, which is a metric that we provide, whether or not the caller was dissatisfied, you could increase that bid. Or if this wasn't dissatisfied, maybe it was, um, maybe it was lead score. So if you had 100 calls, and of those 100 calls, 20 of them had a lead score over 80, you could automatically increase your bid by 8%. Or if you have 100 calls, for every 100 calls, you want um, 30 of them to result in revenue, and if that happens, you'll increase your bid by 20%. Suddenly, you're automating real actions that allow you to make more money without doing much work. Um, and allow you to stay ahead of your competition. Um, the other thing that our tool will allow you to do is actually receive alerts and emails. So if you have maybe a call that is a missed opportunity for additional revenue, you can actually receive an email on that in real time or a list and upload that into your call center system and call those leads back. So we have a very large client, a, very, a company you guys would all know, a Fortune 100 company, that is using missed opportunities in this way. So they receive a list every day from our system is when they choose to download the list and shoot it into their call center system of missed opportunities. And this is hundreds of missed opportunities. So these are good leads that didn't buy from AdWords campaigns. And they're actually able to call those leads back and recapture anywhere from 16 to 20% of that revenue. These are people that said, no, we're not interested. But they call back because our system triggered a missed opportunity alert, and suddenly they're closing a fifth of those people into revenue that was lost, that was gone, that was not captured. That's a big deal. So in summary, I want to I wanna go over the five things we talked about. First, you've got to pay attention to quality score, which is predominantly a measure of click-through. Second is you've got to pay attention to landing pages. In a mobile world, that means phone numbers and short forms. The third thing is you've got to pay attention <clears throat> to generating phone calls. How do you generate more calls is the question you should always be asking. Because calls convert to revenue more frequently than any other lead source. Fourth is you've got to pay attention to lead quality, especially in AdWords. Duration is not enough. 
If you're basing your call metrics or your call volume based on how many calls you're getting over 30 or 60 or 90 seconds, you are wasting money. You've got to determine how good those calls are, especially if you're making large AdWord buys based on that data. And then the fifth thing is use some sort of automation, whether it's just an alert from us when there's a missed opportunity or a good lead or a bad lead. Or on the other side, um, if you're using a tool like Aquizio or Marin or DoubleClick, make sure that you are um, automating bids in a way that is intelligent uh, and you're using data to do that. So with that, um, I think we're ready for questions. Excellent. Thanks very much, McKay. Uh, a very meaty presentation indeed. Uh, publishers would be very wise to review it uh, at least once, maybe twice. Uh, as a result, of course, we do have a lot of, uh, a lot of questions. Uh, McKay, what, uh, we'll start with a simple one. Uh, what countries and languages is your system, is your system rather compatible with? Good question. So um, basically North America at this point. So the U.S. and Canada um, are where we're at right now. We wanted to make sure the system was perfect and working really, really, really well in English before we branched out to other languages. Uh, and, and in some European countries, as you guys know at Ring Partner, getting numbers can be a challenge in oh, yeah. South America. And, and so, you know what, we said, you know what, Canada and the U.S., there's enough revenue to be made here. So, so that's where we're at. It reminds me a lot of uh, sort of how CPA started, where that it, you know a lot of North American traffic before a lot of networks branched out over to Europe and South America. So I I think it's on the horizon. Well, I know it's on the horizon. It's just a matter of when. Um, obviously, we can't. You know, it doesn't work the same. Phone numbers work differently. Uh, people call differently. But uh, a lot of untapped potential there. So I would say in the next year or so, look for a lot of developments in that area. Uh, McKay, another question here. Uh, can you please speak on the relevancy of landing pages for the call-only mobile ads? Google requires a domain entered in the campaign setup. Yeah, so the mobile Google environment is is changing drastically. So here's my, of course they now require a landing page. There's no question. My recommendation is that that landing page have a phone number on it and maybe maybe a form fill if you insist but a phone number only is my preference, and that's what our data says as well. I believe that the day will come, and it may come this year, that uh, Google will not require a landing page for mobile ads, that they will simply only require, that they will simply only have the phone number in the ad. I believe that day's coming very quickly. Um, we've seen how Google has really shifted their value to phone calls, they're monetizing calls now, and I think they believe they can do that better if they control the phone call click and they can only do that in their ad. So I think we're going to see that this year. Excellent. Uh, McKay, I know you're, you're really dialed into uh, obviously mobile search. Uh, what are some trends you sort of see emerging in, in 2015? It's hard to believe we're almost done uh, Q1, but uh, is there anything on the horizon that you sort of see as the next big thing or maybe something interesting that people don't, uh, don't really know about? You know, I think the two things that I reiterated in the presentation are really the things that I'm, I, I believe will happen. I think, number one, we're already seeing people – so we were at Leeds, LeedsCon in Vegas. You guys were too, I know, uh, Henry, a couple weeks ago. And um, the thing we heard there over and over is, number one, how do I generate more calls? So how do I do more? How do I generate more phone calls? Mm -hmm. and, then the, and then the second thing is, people are increasingly um, wanting more data from their calls because they're saying, gosh, now that this is a big leg of my stool for my business, I need more data from it. Because you think about the data that's been available for phone calls up for the last couple of years. Imagine, for example, let's, let's step back here. Put your web uh, marketer hat on for a second. Imagine if the web analytics tool you use simply showed you how long someone was on your site and what, which page they came from. Hmm. That would be really super crappy web analytics. Like you would not use that web analytics tool. That's how web analytics was in like 1973. There wasn't even web analytics, but you know what I'm saying. So it was it's super crappy. But that's what call tracking was until like two years ago. That's all it was. It gave you duration and it gave you what page someone came from or what ad someone came from. That sucks. Like that sucks bad. And so our message is there's so much data on the phone call. Like, there's a, there's a five-minute conversation or a 60-second conversation that we can mine those words and get data from. Why wouldn't we use that data? So that's the trend that we're seeing, frankly, just even last 
two weeks at, at LeedsCon. We're at the BIA Kelsey Show this week in Dallas. Um, um, went to SMX a couple of weeks ago. Like these are the trends we're seeing. People want more phone calls, and they want more data for those phone calls. Very cool. No, it's it's uh, it's an exciting time. Uh, still got some uh, some more questions. Um, McKay, do you advise using toll free or local phone numbers on landing pages and websites or both? I think it depends on your business. I think this is a sort of old school answer. But like, if you're only doing mobile, if you're a local tire shop and you're only doing mobile ads for your town, just put a local number on there. But right. I think um, I think toll free is good if you want a national presence. I think in today's day and age, people that are conducting smartphone searches, they're not really concerned because everyone obviously minutes are now free on smartphones. So essentially, like people don't care about the toll free number. It's just a question of do you want to look national or do you want to look local? That's the question. Um, and that's Excellent. Question for you to answer. Very cool. Um, we've got another one. Uh, in reference to people looking for more calls, can you speak on any up and coming traffic sources uh, for mobile paper call that you know of? I don't know uh, if you want to keep your cards close to your chest. It's always tricky with these kinds of questions, right? You don't want to. I understand people don't want to reveal too much. It's it's sort of a poker game of information. Yeah, you know, I'm not I'm not a very good poker player, but. Um, yeah. <laughs> So here's what I'll here's what I'll say about that. Um, I think let's put it this way: I would, if someone is providing you more data than simply duration, I think that is a good indicator to use that company. Because so we there's a couple of, of sort of competitors in the call tracking space that um, are don't like this technology because it provides too much visibility. Like they want it to be just based on duration because they, they know that, that their publishers can continue to just drive a boatload of phone calls through their system without any accountability. And that's utter BS. Like right. that is, I, I, don't, I don't like that. I, I, there needs to be more visibility. So I'm not going to give names because I think that's always a problematic thing to do. Um, at least in, in front of a large crowd. But what I will say is, um, if someone's good, go with the companies that are providing more data. That's what I'll say. How's that? That's yeah. That's that's no. That's fine for me. Um, so we got another question. Uh, keep keep coming with the questions, guys. Uh, we got enough time for at least a couple more. Uh, so we got a question about quality score. Uh, mobile search has two positions in the top. It's difficult to increase CTR on mobile. Do you have any suggestions to improve mobile search CTR? Yeah, again, I think the only real most thing you can do on mobile is just look at the way your ad is written. It's honestly just a matter of writing and writing clearly and succinctly uh, and testing because there is no other real way to do it on mobile. Um, you've got to just be very, very clear and short and um, test because mobile is such a different game with the with the phone call prevalence that you you just kind of test. So I wish there was a silver bullet. I wish I could tell you something like do this and it'll increase your click through rate, but I can't because there isn't. You just got to write better and test more. Um, and yeah. that sucks because it takes because it takes time. <laughs> yeah, if it was if it was easy, uh, everybody would do it. Um, no, I do a little writing on the side, and the amount of traffic my articles get almost exclusively rely on the title and I can't figure it out I can't decide if a shorter is better or longer is better or you know sort of clever wording or very basic wording it's just a matter of testing it out and I know that's yeah. really hard for for publishers to hear but that's that's what search is it's a big old beast and the only way to tackle it is to is to keep testing until you find uh, sort of find that golden uh, that golden source yeah very good I think that's a great point yeah. All right, McKay. Um, unless anybody else has any other questions, I think uh, I think we're good. Uh, we're good for the webinar. I want to thank everybody very much for uh, for attending. I'll let McKay have the last word here. But uh, until then, uh, this uh, webinar was recorded and it will be available on Ring Partners YouTube channel as well as on our Twitter feed. And our Twitter is at Ring Partner, R I N G P A R T N E R, at Ring Partner. I uh, want to thank everybody again very much for joining. And, uh, McKay, did you have any, any last words before we head out? Yeah, so I think the two things I would say in conclusion is number one, this thing isn't a fad. Like, this isn't going anywhere. No. It's all focus. It's, it's not a fad. Um, the second thing I would say is focus on more than, than duration. 
um, make sure you focus on lead quality. And duration is just a single part of that. And then third is thanks for letting me mention my, <clears throat> my news at the start of the call. Um, we feel like it's a big deal um, that we've acquired a, a very large chunk of, of call source to, um, to get on our very, very advanced analytics platform. And we're excited about it. So it's an exciting time in the industry. And uh, uh, thank you to Ring Partner for being, for being great and for hosting this webinar. So Henry, we appreciate it, man. Right back at you, McKay. Thanks again, everybody, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.